I'm Nancy Grace. This is America's Most Wanted Overtime. Tonight, a female believed to be a homegrown terrorist who put first responders' lives in danger across the country. Josephine Sunshine Overacre, wanted for a string of arsons causing tens of millions of dollars of damage. And special guest joining us, Peter Young. Hold on to your seat. Convicted eco-terrorist, former fugitive on the run nearly a decade, and you can find him at peteryoung.me or on Amazon at Liberate, his new book. Peter, I want to start with you. You were, as they say, a politically motivated fugitive, a.k.a. a criminal, much like Overraker. But what is different about the psyche of politically motivated fugitives? What's different about criminals like Ms. Overaker or myself are that we're motivated simply by compassion. It's actually the opposite of what motivates most criminals. We are motivated by desire to save animals from horrific situations such as slaughterhouses and labs. And because the extremity of what happens to these animals on laboratories and factory farms is so extreme that we are forced to take extreme actions in order to save them. Can I ask you, sir, were you ever concerned about a first responder rushing into a, a burning structure that you had created and losing their life? I never engaged in the act of arson. Let's just be clear about that. All I did was free animals from farms. However, um, arson, it, it, it's against the ALF credo to ever put lives at risk. The ALF only sets fire to empty buildings and, and, and equipment like trucks. So there's never any risk of lives at risk. What about firefighters that show up? Peter, you and I, I assume, will have to agree to disagree. I support your cause of saving animals, but I do not support arson for firefighters that I have worked with my entire career in public service can rush into a burning building and risk their lives. But hey, that's just me. Let me ask you about how you were able to avoid capture for seven years. Sure. I was facing a life sentence for freeing mink and foxes from fur farms, literally 82 years in federal prison. And so there's really only two rules of being a successful fugitive. Number one is to have a real ID under a fake name, which I accomplished, and then don't call your parents. If you could, if you could do those two things, the rest is just simply a matter of not not getting arrested. So ultimately, I was arrested for a petty offense and I had my fingerprints run, and that's how I was caught. Peter, you said you were caught on a petty offense and fingerprinted. What was the offense? Shoplifting. Having been in similar shoes to Overaker, what do you think it will take for her to finally either get caught or surrender? You have to understand the people that are surrounding her, and I'm just, this is speculation, but I can speak to my situation. The people surrounding me, I had a $100,000 price tag on my head from the Fur Commission USA trade group. And the people around me knew that, and they still didn't turn me in despite that massive financial incentive. And the, what, that, the reason for that was that because I was surrounded by people that shared my belief that animals are not here for us to kill, murder, and that sometimes we have to work outside the law to save those animals. And so um, I would have to imagine that, you know, financial motivation is not going to be what it's going to take to get people that are surrounded an animal rights fugitive to mm -hmm. to turn her in. You just heard Peter Young. He supports her to the hilt. Peter Young, so devoted to animals right, animal rights. Peter, I'm just as devoted to victims' rights. And I have worked with so many fire people that risked their lives going into burning warehouses. Maybe they were empty, but those firefighters go in and risk everything. That's my concern tonight, Peter. I want to thank you for being with us, Peter. Convicted eco-terrorist, former fugitive for nearly a decade, author of Liberate on Amazon. You can find him at peteryoung.me. Peter, thank you for being with us.